I love using ChatGPT to write my code, but of late I've been experimenting with the other tools. So we have Cursor AI, Ada, and recently we've got GPT Canvas. And what I love about all these tools is that they can do really good code generation, but they're only as good as the context you give them. And the context we're talking about is documentation. So in Cursor AI, the way you give context in the form of documentation is you head over to the settings and you'll see that part of the context will come from your code base, then another part of it will come from documentation you provide by uploading or providing URLs. So what I'd like to do today is take two open source repos. The first one is handlebars.js, the second one is commandlet. And with commandlet, it's just wrapping function calls within the command pattern, and handlebars.js is wrapping those same commandlets inside of handlebars helpers. Now these two public repositories are actually internal projects that I use myself. I don't usually tell people too much about them. And what happened this morning was that I I was creating a new project called K Template, which I wanted to have use those two projects. And when I went looking at them, we've got Commandlet here and we've got Handlebars JS. They both got similar version numbers because they work in tandem. And I went looking through the code for both of them and we can see that it's a couple of years since I've worked on these projects and then I thought well let's have a look at the documentation so I've come down I've got stories I've got usage examples and when I opened it up there was no documentation here when I went over to the commandlet and I opened up the same files I saw they too had no documentation since I need documentation from these for the K template system, I thought, let's go and generate documentation today. I've opened up the commandlet project within Cursor AI, and what we'll do is we'll start by just creating some documentation area. So we'll create a folder called dot within it, we'll put in a file called usage.md. Now to figure out what we want to do usage on, I've got this little tool that I have, GPT context, and it's just going to gather files and present them in a tree format. And we can see here that we've got, say, a area called case, and this is where things like camel case, title case, or make get upper or dash case can all be done using individual commands. We've got all the comparison operators greater than, equal to. We've got pluralization and singularization. And what I'd like to do is create documentation around all of these on how you would use it. Now I've just come over to usage and I'm going to press command L. And what that'll do is open up a chat window, focusing in on the file that we were looking at. And I'll just paste in this little prompt. Can you read through the following files and give me documentation format or structure that can help convey usage instructions to developers? And from here, we can press the at sign. The folder we want will be the lib directory. So what I'm basically saying is this is where you can find the code. We can already see visually what it should look like. So it's reading through that at the moment. And it's now going to start giving us some ideas. And let's have a look through it. So commandlet usage guide. And we've got introduction, installation, configuration, and then available commandlets. The good thing is it looks like it's grouped them by the subfolders we're talking about. We have array operations going on here. We've got inflection. Is that listed? It certainly is. Miscellaneous, which is showing up here. This looks good. We've got an introduction, installation, and configuration. And we've got a little bit of an issue here, not sure what's going on. Then the list of them are all available in markdown format. But I think we can just go to the top here and press this button. Can we exit out of that? We can, and we'll just accept it. It's taken over the first section where this error was. It didn't know how to read it, so we'll just manually put that in. And I think it needs to have three ticks like that so we'll just close them off as well so let's click on apply to usage we'll press continue and we'll see whether it gets added to the end it does we'll press command y now let's have a look at the documentation we'll close down the chat i think we'll close down the explorer and i've got a little button here that allows us to visualize it as markdown and we can see our documentation has started to come together at which point we might be wanting to expand on this information. We can write it ourselves or we could use cursor in this case. I've come back to the same chat window with the usage MD. We'll head to the bottom and put in a new prompt. Can you give me code usage examples with sample inputs and outputs for each commandlet? You should be able to find the examples here to give it a folder for where it could find some. So we'll type in folders and from there we'll press spec. 
unit tests and it should start reading through the unit tests which exist for each of these commandlets. Hopefully there's good examples in here, usage instructions. And it looks like we've got some information coming in. If you wanted to join some values together with a delimiter between them, so we've got one, two, three, it's doing the comma separation it's got abc with pipes and we see the pipes coming through let's look at the dash notation at the quick brown fox and we've also got the ability to deal with numbers correctly so there's no dash between the five and the 666 which is exactly what i want to see so let's press apply and see what that starts to do now this is a great time to point out the problems that you can have with cursor ai so at the moment when i press apply nothing is really happening if i press continue it looks like something's going on we should see and accept well look at that we got it so nothing was happening for a few examples until i started recording what i've decided to do is go and take the example it's just written and i've wrapped in some extra structure to the document here and we'll just move down to this location hopefully we can see the join post to come through at this location and hopefully it'll also follow the format that we're seeing here it looks like that's worked we can press command yes yes and I don't know that I need the example for join, so we'll remove that from the system. We'll remove that and we'll come down to here. I'll press save and let's work on the next one. So let's go back to the top and we're missing the join pre. So that's a little bit of an issue as well, but I'm just going to work on the next one in the list. So this is case transformations. We'll press apply and we'll go with continue. I'm hoping that we'll see something here. So I've manually put in another heading for the next group, case transformations. I've started off with backslash and we'll do an apply on that. Press continue and see if it figures out where to place it. Looks like it has. We'll press command Y. Another example coming through. Then we'll go to camel. We'll press apply on that and continue and we'll press command y on that so i'm two in and i've run into another problem which is interesting i think we can fix it when we look at the code that's coming through on the right it's cherry picking the files from that particular folder so what we should be able to do is head over to the terminal and we'll just run this little command here which is going to find all the files that are in the case changing folder this is really the order i want stuff to go so that's now in my clipboard now that i've run that so we've got two here and we've got everything in the right order now it's in alphabetical order so let's just apply this first one press continue and see what happens now i'd already tried doing multiple at the same time and it doesn't provide a good user experience so i'm just going to let them come through one at a time so now we're on to dash we'll press continue and we'll get ready over here and that's the right location we'll press command y and we'll move on to dot and press continue let it come in and on to double colon this is a little bit tedious the way this works i'm still getting used to using cursor i think there are better ways that we can solve these problems but it's still pretty decent go on to human press continue still waiting command y and then all of a sudden it just jumped ahead and that gave me some indication of what could have been the issue i've seen this before with cursor that maybe it was still writing files down in the chat window and it couldn't move ahead as quickly or maybe it's a different issue but looks like we've got most of them in place for that one particular section which is the case transformation now circling back to the array operations it had missed one of them and we can press command i in this case just to work on this particular area and we'll put in a prompt can you add documentation for join pre and hopefully it will find the right information and this is looking good we'll just press command y on that there's an accept all let's press that see what it does let's just have a quick run of the documentation we've got the command led examples and here's the array operations currently only three we've, they're all joins with delimiters and some of them the delimiter can be at the end or it can be at the beginning if we move into the case transformations we've got things like backslash camel case constant sort of notation 
dash dots double colons so all of this i use generally in handlebars helpers but i also use this within other libraries within the system which is why it's isolated out to its own command so we'll come back up to the index and we'll just move on to the next section we'll try and do it all in one go so we'll press command l we should actually go back to the last conversation that we were on we'll say can you add to the documentation this spell there that's okay we'll just paste everything in and see what it comes up with and we'll also move down where hopefully it's going to come in in around this particular location you can see here using the chat window that it's come through malformed again and this is going to be difficult to copy over manually i'll try another approach what i'll do is i'll put in comparison operations that's the next section in this case i'll press command i and I'm just going to go, can you add to the documentation? And I'm just listing the actual commands that are related to comparison. Now it's just finished generating. I don't see anything. I'm expecting line 311 for information to be loaded. Let's just move up. Look at that. It's pasted it up here. Now I could accept it, but the problem is it's going to clear this area out. I wonder if we can say code is OK, but in wrong location. And we'll just say it should be at 311, press enter. Now it's finished. It didn't really do the right thing, but it's better because at the moment it's not going to delete this section. So what I think we can do is just press command Y. We'll accept all that information and we'll just find the end of it. And that's the end there. We'll press command X and we've just cut it and we'll just paste it in here and press save before it goes and destroys any code on me. But let's take what we learnt from that last one. I'm going to move on to trying to do the last three all in one hit and we'll go down to the bottom and I've said, put it here. We'll press command I and say, can you continue with documentation? And then I've said, and place it at, put it here. And we'll paste in all that information we've got. And what's interesting with the user interface here is that I've pasted lines that have carriage returns in them and you can't see anything here. I'm not sure if it works. So we'll press enter. Yeah, look at that. It hasn't put the information. Now, if I paste it here, you'll see that it was in my clipboard. It just doesn't go into the chat window for some reason. So I don't have any faith that this is going to work. Now, luckily I've been proven wrong so everything has worked. What's been a bit of a problem is the user experience is a little challenging because you can't see what's going on. I'm just going to press accept all on that. Do I need to press save all? Let's do a save all, see what it does. And we'll come back. We've got the inflection operations are going on. And if we move down a bit further, we've got the miscellaneous operations. So let's go check out the final documentation. So before we had a page not found for usage. And if we do a refresh, we are on 13.2 at the moment. If we refresh this now, we're now up to 14.0. And with that, there should be new usage information going on. So let's just click on that. We've got documentation. Now the hyperlinks that we've got going on probably need to be added into this area as well, but we can see the different sections. So here's the pluralization which is inflection operations. What happens when you want to get the ordinal of a number? So first, second, third, or including the number, 21st, the 11th. How do we pluralize? How do we pluralize numbers? How do we singularize? How do we get rid of the plurals? So books becomes book. And then there's some miscellaneous operations like converting into JSON, safe and padding. Now that we've documented one project using Cursor AI, let's see how another approach works. In the next video, I'm going to be using ChatGPT Canvas to document the Handlebars JS project. Curious about how this technique compares? You'll learn a different approach to writing documentation using ChatGPT Canvas and see a unique way of how it works with code context. I'm Happy Dave. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.